What's going on, YouTube? Metal Complex here, and today I am joined with Jim McNair from uh, ZT and Kershaw, Kai USA. Uh, we're going to be talking about some exciting new uh, models uh, coming out in 2021. Jim, how are you doing this morning? Hey, doing good. Doing good. I'm awake. <laughs> good deal. Me too. Hey, um, so you guys sent me your uh, 2021 catalog, and I, I looked through and uh, found some models that I thought were super interesting. And uh, uh, yeah, is there, I, I, I've, I've noticed that the first thing that I wanted to ask you about is this, yeah. uh, it's the TDS, it's the tune detent system. Yeah. What was the model that, that super lean model that, that it was first on, what was the model number for that through zero tolerance? Um, the, the first ZT we used it on was the 0707. I yeah. Guess, you know, actually that, that's not totally accurate. We, we used it on a model that we didn't end up producing a, a few years ago, but that's the first one we've produced with, with that mechanism. Okay, cool. Well, I, the thing that, I mean, and, and somebody else pointed this out to me, but I, I thought it was really neat that you could apply pressure to the lock bar and still flip it, which was immediately interesting because the profile was narrow and you kind of, you, you know, right. you kind of sometimes had to put your video. So I thought that was really cool. And I guess that is present on this new, is, it, is this correct that it's present on the new 0762? It is. Yes, that's correct. Okay. So that's cool. And can I say this is much larger than I thought it was going to be and also way lighter <laughs> than I thought it was going to be. Uh, I'm going to, I'm going to highlight this real quick. Oh, you've got one. Yeah. And yeah, no, I've got one too. So whatever, whatever you, you're welcome to highlight them. I just, I, I'll end up holding it up when I talk about it. Okay, cool. Yeah. It, so blocks, it blocks my face. It's, it's perfect. <laughs> so tell me about the, uh, I guess a brief history of the, the, the concept uh, with the, uh, with the, with the TDS, the tune detent system? So the concept behind it is, again, just like you said, you know, people have a tendency with with frame lock knives and also with our, our subframe lock mechanism because it's you can feel it. It's, it's out there on the outside. People have a tendency to squeeze on the lock bar. And with a traditional detent system, your, your ball bearing is mounted in the lock bar and it falls into a hole on the back side of the blade. And that's what creates your detent. Okay. And so when you press that ball bearing down into the hole, it locks up the knife. It makes it too hard to open. Right. And so we've tried different things. Um, one thing we did on this knife that we've done other ones is you can kind of see we've dipped down the handle a little bit. We made okay. this kind of recess for your fingers to sit in. You naturally kind of, you feel that hole and you naturally kind of want to put your finger in it, your middle finger mm -hmm. typically, or your, or your ring finger. Right. Um, but going beyond that, the tune detent system, what it does, and it, what's nice about this knife is you can actually, you can see some of the liners inside of there. Yeah. Um, that top liner you're seeing there is actually a blue piece of titanium. That's just there for show. It adds a little bit of a, a fun look. The silver steel piece you see is actually part of the tune detent bar. So okay. it's essentially, it's, it's essentially, it's a liner with nothing but a little finger that has a ball bearing in it. Okay. Uh, so we're not doing, normally... That job is shared with the lock bar, which also locks the knife. So okay. in this case, we have our lock bar, and we actually do still have a ball bearing on this side. There's just no hole for it to fall into. It just helps that it helps the blade glide over the lock bar without grinding along that flat surface. Interesting. So the front okay. side, we've added this new liner, and we, it has a ball bearing pressed into it again. And and so this little finger applies pressure to the blade, and then on the front side of the blade now there is a hole. And it's really that simple. It's it's okay. more of a relocation. And okay. so we call cool. it the tune detent system because sometimes when you have your detent ball in the in the frame lock or in the in this or in the subframe lock in this case, you sort of have to balance how much lock pressure you have with because it's also creating the it's also it's also that pressure is also impacting the detent. Okay. And so by separating it out, you can tune it to whatever you need it to be just on that front side and then set your lock pressure to whatever it needs to be for optimum lockup. So it's, it's nice to be able to make those into, into separate things. Yeah. Um, yeah. That kind of frees you guys up uh, for different handle profiles. And that if you want to do something that's thinner and to, cause that the, right. the, the specs on this are impressive. Uh, this is first off, this is a laser beam behind the edge. <laughs> um, but uh, also it's an eight inch knife with a 3.4 inch blade. And what's the weight on it? Ooh, you know, I don't know off the top Three, of my head. I'm sorry. I think it's 
it's it's really it's it's like it's like three ounces or something in there it's real in fact i can just weigh it right here but i remember thinking holy cow you know it really kind of threw me off when i handled it uh and i thought the ratios were all impressive yeah 2.85 ounces is what i'm seeing on my scale here that sounds right yeah, yeah, gosh, it's, I mean, you get a lot of blade and you get a lot of usable knife and it's, you don't have to worry about where your hands are going. I really like that, that tune detent system. I talked about that when I reviewed that, that other model. I think that's neat. So I, we can expect to see knives with that system, more knives, with that system in the future then for sure. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's something yeah. we're going to continue with. We won't, we won't always do it on everything. Um, okay. it's, and it's partially because personal preference is different. I mean, the the one thing that changes with that is that you don't really have that drop shut kind of action that some people like. Yeah. So because you have, a, you have a little more pressure on the blade, mm-hmm. but you get a real nice opening action, nice snap. And again, you, you can rest your fingers wherever you want and it makes it yeah. really, really easy to do. I'm actually one of a few people who doesn't obsess over the false shut thing. I actually like, I have scars on my fingers from too much false shuttiness. And I always say like, I, I don't, I actually would prefer that it's more controlled. I really am more concerned with it deploying the way that I want it to and right. then safely being able to close it. So I think that's cool. I, uh, I, I, there's one in here that I'm just, I'm dying to talk about uh, <laughs> because I really like this model when you guys introduced it, the ZT0308. And this is a sprint run, correct? No, this, this is uh, production. This is, oh, it's this production. is production. This is being added to the catalog. Oh my gosh. So I, I had that wrong. I looked at it and I just thought, I think it was the magic or the, uh, I was, yeah. Oh my gosh. So I've got this one here too. And I'm going to show yeah. mine off. It just yeah, me, I was just realizing to, you can see mine has a flaw on it. That I, I have a, I have an early sample that was a, that was a blem, but yours will be correct and perfect. Oh my gosh. So this thing, the action, and I remember the, uh, I, I got a comment, even though I just said, I was like, the, oh, I'm not that obsessed with the false shot action, but it's still impressive on this knife. I can't believe how easily this thing fall. I mean, the, it, it's so easy uh, on, on the drop. It's just insane. But I, the, yeah. it's the, the color set up here. I like the tiger stripe thing. And I like the all black look of this. I was so yeah. excited. That was the first thing that I noticed when you sent me that catalog. I was like, man, because I, li- I mean, you know, people have their preferences. They either like yeah. the lighter profile stuff or they like the heavy. I, I tend to just enjoy on an enthusiast level, a, a big heavy duty knife, you know? And yeah. so I saw that and I was like, man, that is excellent. I really, really like this thing. Um, See, so, I'm, actually, I'm glad I'm not the only one because I'll admit when I first saw the proof of the catalog and I've got to give our marketing team some credit. They did a really nice job with that catalog this year. Um, <laughs> that picture of this knife sitting on the ammo can yeah. I don't know what it was, that that shot just made me go, ooh. <laughs> I've been looking yeah. at it for months and I still, it made me want it. It's like, okay. Oh man, I think- You, you got it's me. A, <laughs> I, it's, it's really cool because I was a big fan of the O300 series, not the Ken Onion uh, O300 series knives. And I like that, that it, it's kind of translating and you have that sort of, it looks like alligator, alligator skin texturing on the titanium scales. And um, then you yeah. have- it's a different style. It's a different pattern, but it definitely is that same heavy texture. Yeah, I, uh, I love also it. Also on the titanium as well. Yeah, and you, but you still manage to get a just stupidly thin edge out of this thing. I mean, it's so tall. And I, and I mean, it looks like it's probably 155 thousandths, but the blade is so tall and the way that it's ground, it really is just insanely slicey. I, I really, really like this knife and it's so powerful. It's one of those knives when you flip it, you can feel it recoil all the way down to your elbow. There's so much power in there. It's really, really satisfying. I know you get asked this a million times. People say, why is there a big hole on that knife? And I always, every time I see that I jump in because to me, it makes, it, it, it actually adds kind of an interesting area to the knife that would otherwise be blank. And I have no issue with it whatsoever. And I've had this, I've, I've said that so many times, my channel, and I just can't understand why some people get so bent out of shape about that. I kind of think it looks, it looks cool. Was there a reasoning behind the hole or was it just kind of an aesthetic thing? <laughs> I mean, I mean, I, I could lie to you and say, oh, it's for when it's all full of sand that the sand pours out the hole, but no, it's, it's an aesthetic <laughs> configuration. It, it, it's aesthetic. Yeah. It's something think, to make it interesting. It's a big handle. There's a lot of real estate yeah. and we're just trying to do something cool. I, you know, I've always had this, this thing with like trying to make the pivot look almost like a tension set diamond in a ring where it looks kind of pinched. Oh yeah. Um, okay. And 
it's just a it's just a silly thing of mine but yeah the whole you can actually kind of see my face i could look at you through the hole right now yeah there we go uh <laughs> i I'm think sorry. it's I cool man. children i'm always doing things like oh you see daddy through the hole but, i definitely do not generally thing, with man. a knife <laughs> yeah <laughs> not like with my three-year-old I'm like hey buddy how you doing <laughs> but, uh, oh, man. you can it's tell funny. it's morning yeah um, yeah no the hole is the hole is kind of a thing um playing with positive and negative space i mean and you know that's something we've done i mean this is <laughs> I've definitely, you know, I've definitely heard some people complain about the hole and, you know, we, we note that, you know, not yeah. everything will have on it. Yeah. Um, this one just happened to be one that we, we thought that was a cool feature. I don't believe it makes the knife any less strong and I don't necessarily feel like it's letting in so much debris that it's going to be an issue. I mean, it's, it's open at the top and the bottom. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So, I, oh, that's so, it's so funny. I, that's why I've always said, it's like, there are so many different access points to it and they they tend to be fine. And there's a lot, of course, we see that in other models too. I, my personal view of it is I think it looks cool. I've never understood why people didn't like that. But anyways, I've had to bring that up. Opinions. Everyone likes their own things, you know, yeah. I mean, message received. I, there, there are enough people that don't like the hole that we'll keep it. We'll take that under consideration and we'll make some models that don't have holes in them. I mean, it's, there you go. We're going to make more <laughs> knives. We, you know, we're, we're going to keep on going. This one sure. has a hole in it. Sure, sure. Hole's probably hey, can you tell me the, um, uh, I was curious about the, the uh, just real quick, what's the, the history of the logo, the, lo the in-house design logo? What's the, uh, the idea behind the logo? Is there a story behind it? Um, it's, it's meant to be a little symbol that, I mean, I, you know, I don't think it's going to focus if I, if I do it on this particular knife, but you can see it on yeah. there. Yeah. It's, it's something that we, we have done as a company where we're pointing out the fact that, you know, we, we've always worked with collaborators and we love our collaborators. We've had, we have some wonderful relationships in the industry. Um, but we're also pointing out that we as a company, we, we can design our own stuff as well. Um, you know, and I, of course, the moment I bring up any other brand, people say, you're not like that brand, but um, <laughs> there are lots of brands. There are lots of companies that are known for having great design. And sure. my goal with our design team here is to, have Kershaw and ZT be known for having great design, regardless of whether we're working with a co with a collaborator, whether it's coming from our own team. And it's not it's not about make it's not about calling out us as specifically as designers. It's about calling out the brand and saying this brand is known for great design and great ideas. Cool, cool, good deal. That's interesting. I just I remember seeing that for the first time and thinking, I wonder what the uh, what the story behind that is. That's cool. Speaking yeah, of, you'll see my name is not on the blade. You know. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Speaking um, of Kershaw. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry. I think we're there. I think there was a little bit of lag there. So I talked over you. No, Speaking, you, it was, of, that was uh, <laughs> Speaking of Kershaw, this thing caught my eye. I want to show this real quick. This is the capsule. Is that how we say that? Yep. Yep. That's right. So capsule this is my, a. this is my camera shaking there a little bit. So this is, is it technically an OTF, but it's not automatic. Yes. So it's, it's not is, automatic, but it is OTF. Correct. It's, right, it's, so, it's, it's coming out the front. Cool. So is the idea here, somebody who wants to be able to carry a knife that is OTF in nature, but at the same time, they don't have to worry because of the blade length and because of the fact that it's not automatic, it's, it should solve some issues, you know, where there are restrictions against, you know, certain types of knives in certain areas. Right. Is that yeah. the idea? I mean, essentially, it, it's not necessarily a new concept. We didn't invent this. It, it functions very much like a utility knife, except that okay. it, it doesn't have a bunch of little detents along the way. It, it's just locks open, yeah. locks closed. It's very smooth. I, um, go ahead, sorry. Oh, no, no, go ahead. I'm interested to hear what you were saying there. So, and it's funny, you know, we were just talking about design and, and collaborators, and this is actually a collaboration with Jens, Jens Anso, okay. so our, our, our friend from Denmark. Um, this is one that's been on the, uh, in the works for a little while because it is a bit of a different mechanism. I mean, it took a couple of tries to get it right, but we're really happy with the result that we came up with. Um, so yeah, we have, we have glass filled nylon scales. We have an eight CR 13 MOV blade. Oh, I want to point out as I just run my finger along there, this is not a double edge knife. Um, it is single edge. So, so there are, there are still some, some States and some counties where double edge knives are, are even in a manual action knife are not okay and so this is single edged but it's got that nice kind of bayonet style grind yeah uh, we have a single position pocket clip but i'm, I'm going to point out you know you can see me indexing this thing in my hand and just kind of rolling it around it's very comfortable being symmetrical it's very easy to just flip it around so even for me as a left-handed person 
I can carry this and it's, and it's no big deal. I pull it out. I put it in my pocket the same way and there's no flipper sticking out or anything. So it, it I just flip it over the other way and it still opens perfectly for me. So yeah. then I can index it. So the edge is down and that's it. It's really, it's no bother. And it's almost like a little trick. I mean, I yeah. really, I really enjoy this knife. It's been, it's been definitely one of kind of the, the hottest new things we've come out with people have been really interested in, but it's fun. It's, it's an OTF it's legal just about everywhere. Uh, it has a little lanyard loop, or if you want to put this on a keychain, you could do that. Um, it's just, it's fun and it's unique and it'll do the job. It does it, lock open and close. It's, you know, it, I don't know. I, mean, I guess I can't say a whole lot more about it. You're exactly right. It is fun. In fact, like as I'm sitting here, I remember, so yesterday I probably sat and fidgeted with it. It does. It's got an, an interesting type of fidget factor. Does. I sat and played with this thing for probably an hour and a half until I got exactly the right pressure points down on the top and bottom. It's, it's fun. And you're right. It does. Uh, it is going to do the job and it looks cool. It looks, it's just a little, it looks like a little dagger, but it's not sharp on both sides. I really thought when I, when I saw the picture, that's what I imagined. It, it, it feels exactly yeah. the way that I imagined. And I was so satisfied with that. I think that's really cool. Good deal. Uh, yeah. The other one that I wanted to ask you about uh, before there's another ZT model I wanted to ask you about, but the other one that really, really piqued my interest was this highball XL. Uh, okay. And this is, and so the, did the highball, the original, did that come out in 2020? Yeah, I believe so. I mean, it came okay. out in 2020 at SHOT Show. So this is the Highball XL. So this is a new one for the Kershaw line. Okay. Um, so it's it's similar to the Highball in that it has the big, deep grooves in the blade, and it is a non-flipper knife. And it's also similar to the Highball in that it's running on the KVT ball bearing washers. So this is one that, again, it, I wish you could just hand this to people through the screen. I'd probably never get it back. But um, <laughs> because even though it's, it's not non-flipper, having it operating on those ball bearing washers makes it super, super slick and smooth. And it's just, it's just a pleasure to open and close. Again, yep. this is one that I tend to, like you were talking about the capsule, I tend to fidget with this when I'm holding it because it, it really just, it's such a yep. smooth, uh, pleasant action. We have Absolutely. a couple of different parts on it that have that blue PVD. We have this, it's an over travel stop and it's also meant to be sort of like, it's just ever so slightly raised. And it's just meant to be kind of a spot where you can naturally feel it and gives you a place to put your fingers. Again, trying to keep them off the lock bar. I gotta keep going off camera here. And again, I'm, I'm also, I'm left-handed, so I'm a little awkward and I'm trying not to drop this on the mic, but. Doing great. <laughs> but you can see, I mean, it's, it's, it's really comfortable. It's a little bigger than the old highball. This is a bead blast finish instead of gray PVD. Uh, it is a D2 blade, so it's nicely upgraded. And, you know, it's really, as, as this knife goes and as for the materials, uh, this is seventy nine ninety nine. Okay. So once we get this down to an actual street price, it will be really quite affordable and a lot of bang for the buck. Yeah. Uh, you, everything that you said, that was my thoughts. Exactly. I love the little slot. I'm going to switch these real quick. This little slot here being it, it, it reverse flicks so easily and it wheels well, did you do the, out did you do so the easily. middle finger thing. I can't, I can't yeah. do that. <laughs> well, I'm, that's that's the nice thing though is that that the way that you have that slot there it's going to make it so easy for people to open this whatever their preference is whether they want to put their thumb way down here or they want to put it up here and it's it is it's very smooth it's in fact this one is very nearly i didn't show that very well and i'm on the small camera it's very nearly falls shut and i like how this looks and this one fits my hand i've honestly never handled the smaller highball but this one really fits my hand and the edge geometry is great on it this one just stood out to me and I like that it's a manual, you know, bearing uh, knife. I thought it was really cool. Yeah. Um, and then the last knife I want to ask you about, it's one that I don't have here, the 0990. Oh, ZT. shoot. Yeah. No, sorry about that. We were a little That's short okay. on samples on that knife. So the 0990. So obviously enough, if, some people may not know, but this is based on our triple nine model, which was a limited edition knife we made a few years ago. And again, I keep saying we didn't make a whole lot of them. Um, and so, oh boy, the, the, the no holes crowd is not going to like this one very much. <laughs> um, so I hope they do actually, I hope they can accept this knife because it really is a lot of fun. Um, I'm just kidding. I don't want to <laughs> offend whatever percentage of our audience that may be, but no, I mean, it, it really, I love this little knife and I'm excited about it for a couple of reasons. One is that it is smaller. Um, I have a big hand. It's still a full grip. I like that about it. 
but it's like a 3.3 inch blade three and a quarter it's 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 not very big uh the original triple nine was like 3.75 and was actually wider so this is scaled down from that knife it's really the profile really isn't that different except that after we scaled it down we also narrowed it um i feel like the modern trend is to go a little narrower and again this mm -hmm. is not the narrowest thing we make this is kind of in the middle mm -hmm. but it's just it's just kind of right it's not too big it's not too small it's still it still feels like a it fills my hand pretty well it's got a little bit of jimping here for your thumb um we do have the big slot in the blade and that big opening in the blade is because the original triple nine had two big carbon fiber inlays, one on each side, and we weren't going to do that on this on this particular knife. So we did the hole to, to mimic that shape and that look. It really looked kind of boring without it. Um, and then again, we've maintained what I call the flying bridge. So we have this little this little cantilevered section that holds the stop pin. It's not attached to the handle. This is all open, and we've built it a little differently. So the original knife was all solid titanium. And this is a little controversial. Um, these pieces are all made of steel. Um, so we have a steel overlay and we have steel liners. And there's a reason for that. I know, you know, it, the, the immediate thought is, oh man, why do they go cheap on it? And this is not a cheap way of building this. It's actually because it's very, very rigid. So okay. this little part, it's hard to imagine, but this is like, <laughs> It's, it's over an inch long and it's, it's relatively slim. And these liners, again, we wanted this knife to be nice and slim and comfortable in your pocket. And these liners are about a 16th of an inch thick. So when you couple that all together, you worry about it flexing front to back and up and down. You really, on any, on any frame or liner lock knife, you don't want that up and down flex. And so in spite of the fact that this is all very open and very, and you know, very, carved away and skeletonized it is very stiff the lock works great it opens with authority um it is a inset liner lock in this case okay and we have a stonewash finish on the 20 cv blade carbon fiber handles um we do have the pivot on this side will be black in production okay um and carbon fiber on the back handle uh, steel liners, and then I don't know if the camera is going to pick this up very well, but we we have the word zero tolerance written in the backspacer, so that that will be molded into there. Okay. And so this will have an MSRP of two hundred and seventy five dollars. And so while it's not the cheapest thing we make in ZT, it's also not the most expensive. Uh, it costs a few bucks more because there's a lot more going on inside of it, in spite of the construction. Sure. And it, you know, I think it's one of those things where you know I'm sure some people will be disappointed in the material choice. But I think once you pick it up, you fall in love with it. It's really quite light. Um, and unfortunately, I don't have a scale in front of me here, but it's, let me see here. You know what? It's not, it's not a whole lot different than this. Really? Okay. I was wondering it's about a that. a little bit heavier, but not much. I, I would okay. say this is just a, just a hair over three ounces. Wow. Um, okay. the, the catalog will prove me wrong. I, now that I've said a number, I'm sure <laughs> I'm like way off, but, but. <laughs> Feel wise, it's very comfortable. I actually carried one of these proto prototypes for around, and it was. Uh, I'm, <laughs> I'm Need some more coffee. My I carried <laughs> I carried one of these prototypes around for a few weeks, and they're really comfortable and easy to use. They have a relatively small flipper, but they open nicely. And okay. no, I, I just think that this is going to be something that's it's a full production item. I think it's going to be a lot more available for people, and regardless of price, it's going to be something that you can carry every day comfortably and it'll disappear in your pocket. And yet you can pull this out and it's a real conversation starter. Yeah. I was going to say the, the, the look of it, I mean, that's not going to be a model that people are going to be able to forget. And like you said, I mean, with the way that you've got that, that you said the, the floating bridge back there, I yeah. mean, that part, that makes sense to me why you would want to use steel there. I mean, that's, you know, after you've got the thing and you're carrying it, you're using it, what it ends up being is, a tool that you're going to depend on. And if, you know, if you're going to depend on it, it's got to be able to lock up solid and consistently, right. And have that strength behind it. So I think that's cool. Uh, it's definitely not, it's going to be one of those models that people will always, you know, be able to identify because it's so unique looking. Well, yeah, I think, gosh, I think that's, that's everything that I had for you. This is interesting. I'm you, I mean, definitely, definitely some interesting stuff coming out. 2021 for uh zt and kershaw for sure and yeah uh i think people you know my uh my opinion of this stuff is as people get their hands on them 
I think people are really going to like them, definitely. And yeah. I'll do I'll do some highlights and stuff on the channel so you guys can, you know, see kind of my my general tabletop sort of overview kind of thing on uh, here. So I'm excited for sure. Um, I appreciate you, you know, taking the time to talk with me. This is this is cool. And honestly, this is the first time I've ever done this. So thanks for making it easy on yeah. me. <laughs> no, no problem at all. It's uh, it, it's always nice to be able to chat about this stuff and really explain it a little bit, especially because it, it doesn't always make sense just looking at it on paper. So thanks for giving us the opportunity to do that. Absolutely. Absolutely. All right. Well, guys, you heard it all here. Thanks so much for watching. If you guys enjoyed the video, please leave a like. If you'd like to check out my other content, I do, of course, have lots of videos of knives that are either expensive or inexpensive that I do or don't like. So check those out. And if you enjoy all my content, go ahead and click on that metal complex. I'll go right there and subscribe because there's definitely more coming. Thanks again for watching, everybody, and have a great day.